Question one, trains might seem like a mature technology with little room for improvement, but researchers who study the matter say that making them fully autonomous could improve their safety. So here we are saying that uh, trains might seem like a mature technology, a technology that has been around for many years. And people might think that it doesn't have much room for improvement. But researchers who study the matter say that actually, if you make them autonomous, that is, you don't use drivers in trains, then their safety could be improved. So here I'm talking about matter in respect of issue or subject, right? People who study the subject, the subject of trains, the matter of trains. So I like A. Substance cannot be used in place of matter here. Substance would be used in a more physical sense. For example, what's the substance of this alloy? As in, what is this alloy made of, right? Or it could be used in an abstract sense when I'm saying, in effect, this is the substance of your argument. That is to say, this is the gist of your argument, right? So it can't be used in the context of subject, so it's not B. Reason is the cause of something. What's the reason behind this? So that also doesn't make sense here. And impression is used to say, for example, my impression of him, which is to say what I think of him, right? So that also doesn't fit. So the right answer is A. When COVID untethered us from our offices, many people experienced new forms of flexibility, leaving us hungry for more. So here I'm talking about how COVID led to people not having to go to offices. Most people were working from home and this provided them with new forms of flexibility, which made them hungry for more, right? So we know that over the last one and a half years, most people in white collar jobs especially have worked from home. And the sentence is saying that COVID does untethered us from our offices. So we have saved, uh, pulled, freed, and called. So freed makes sense in this context, right? COVID freed us from our offices. We didn't have to go to offices anymore. So freed can directly come in place of untethered. So I like this. I'm not saying that COVID saved us from our offices, right? I'm not saying that we needed to be saved from our offices. It wasn't that the office was a dangerous place, right? So it's not A. Okay, COVID did not pull us from our offices in the context of the sentence, right? Again, I could use pull in this context if I'm saying that, you know, I was pulled out of the fire. So again, it would mean that there was a dangerous situation and I got lucky. So not B. And called doesn't make sense at all because it's not that COVID could call us from our offices, right? That wouldn't make sense. I'm talking about how we were untethered in the sense of being freed from our offices and that gave us new forms of flexibility. So C. It bothers many that their online data, contacts and search history, shopping preferences and driving habits are harvested and used in ways they can't control. So here we are talking about online users whose data is harvested, is used in ways that they can't control. Data such as contact, search history, and preferences. So if you look at the options, online data are achieved, gathered, hunted, or read. So the best option is gathered, right? It bothers many that their online data are systematically gathered by tech companies and then used for different purposes. So I like B. You can't really say data are achieved, right? It's not something that you can use the word achievement with. So it's not A. Again, data can't be hunted, right? It's not a prey that you hunt. It's not something that runs away from you and you have to kind of make a grab for it. So it's not C. And reaped is used in the other sense of harvest, right? For example, to reap a harvest is to say that, you know, the crop has matured and you cut the crop and, you know, sell it later on. So that also doesn't make sense here because here we are talking about online data. So gathering would be the best sense. On the page, Thubron is a hidden narrator. His judgments clear, but his motives and emotions rarely revealed. 
In person, however, he's more forthcoming. Okay, so here I'm talking about an author, Thubron, and the difference between his life on the page, his life as an author, and his personal self. So when he writes, he is a hidden narrator. That is to say that you're not always able to glean his motives and emotions. Those are not clearly revealed. But when you meet him in person, he's a more forthcoming and forthright person, right? So in what way has hidden here been used? Is it isolated, remote, quiet, or absent? So I can eliminate A and B easily, right? I'm not saying that Hubron is an isolated narrator. Isolation would mean that somebody is lonely or somebody is at a place where there is no one else. And that's not how I'm using the word hidden. I'm basically using hidden to mean that he doesn't really bring out his personal emotions on the page. So it's not A. And remote is something that is far away from civilization. So that also doesn't fit the context. Now, am I saying that he's a quiet narrator or am I saying that he's an absent narrator? So I think between C and D in the context of narration, absent is better, right? Because quiet would mean that he wouldn't speak, that he doesn't come forward, but that's not possible because he is writing and he is presenting his views. But he's absent in the sense that you can't really figure out where he's coming from, right? So he presents his views, but he doesn't tell you the background. He doesn't reveal his emotions, right? So in that way, he's an absent or a hidden narrator. So not quiet, but absent. In today's digital age, it's easy to think that travel is not important, but there's no understanding to be had without travel. There is an illusory closeness that you get on the screen, which is no substitute for the real thing. Okay, so here we are talking about today's digital age, an age of technology where you can Skype or Zoom with a person halfway across the globe. And so it's easy to think that you don't really need to travel outside your city or your country because you can speak to anyone, video chat with anyone anywhere in the world. But the author is saying you can't really have real understanding without travel. There is an illusory closeness that you get on the screen. So the closeness that you get on the screen, the closeness that you get with someone on a tech platform is not real. It's illusory, right? Which is no substitute for the real thing. So you can see that I need an antonym for real because I'm kind of putting them in contrast. Illusory versus real. And my options are deceptive, absolute, notable, and different. So deceptive works. Deceptive is something which is not real, something which is designed to fool you. So the closeness that you experience on screen is illusory. It's deceptive. It's not real. Absolute would not fit what I'm trying to say. Absolute is complete. And in fact, I'm saying the opposite, that the closeness that I get on screen is not real. It's not complete. It's illusory. So it's not B. Notable is something that is worth noting, something that catches the eye. So again, that doesn't fit the context because I'm not talking about the closeness being notable. And different is not correct because while I'm saying that the closeness that you get on the screen is different from the real thing, the closeness that you get when you actually meet a person in real life, that is not what illusory is referring to, right? It is not referring to difference as much as deceptiveness. So the best answer is A. Okay, so these were five questions from vocabulary in context. And this was the seventh such drill that we have uploaded on the channel. I will link in the description box to all the other six drills. Do check those out and let me know if they helped. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye-bye.